Clay Thompson free agency rumors. That's what we'll be discussing on this edition of Warriors today. And I know I'm not a familiar face so far on Warriors today, but I am filling in for Chase Sr. on this episode. Clay Thompson, could he be leaving Golden State? There's more reports coming out about what Clay might do this summer from Mark Stein, NBA insider. Here we go again, right? Mark Stein is reporting that the Orlando Magic, yes, the Orlando Magic, who we've known to be interested in Clay for quite a while now, are reporting interest in, again, uh, Orlando continues to be monitored by various league observers as a natural suitor for Golden State's Clay Thompson. Now, with this Mark Stein quote, I kind of jumbled it around a little bit. It did mention Paul George first, and that could be potentially who Orlando is looking to sign, probably a little bit more than Clay Thompson, but... With what the Orlando has in cap space this summer, it looks like Klay Thompson could be interested in leaving Golden State and end up taking more money. Now, as far as what Klay is going to be offered, we don't know just yet. Nobody has kind of given, shown their hand, per se, uh, as to what they will be offering Klay Thompson. But I imagine that Orlando will be in the market of outbidding Golden State. And we'll talk about that more as today's video goes on. Do you think... The Magic will offer Klay Thompson upwards of $30 million per year. If I, We'll talk about how I feel about this in just a second, but with the cap space that Orlando has right now, they could be big spenders in free agency. They have a young team right now, and, and there's a lot going on as far as how big fish they will be in free agency this season. Comment yes or no. Drop your thoughts down in the comment section if you think Klay Thompson will be offered $30 million a year or more by the Orlando Magic. I wouldn't. Uh, let, let, let's be honest here. Klay Thompson, at the end of the day, he's a, a warrior legend. And, and there's no doubt about that. He is, he's cemented his legacy as an, an all-time Golden State Warrior, winning four championships. But at this point in his career, it just doesn't seem like he is worth that money. And for a team like the Orlando Magic, yeah, they probably can make a deal like that and, and not be hurt down the road just due to how young and how deep that roster is. They just need shooting, and Klay Thompson could provide that for them. But we know Joe Lacob and the Golden State Warriors want to get under the luxury tax heading into the 24-25 season. Here is a quote from Mark Dibble of Heavy.com, and it's he says that it's going to come down to what Warriors are willing to pay Klay Thompson. He says Golden State's bill in 24-25 will undoubtedly come down to Klay Thompson's impending entrance into unrestricted free agency. Thompson made more than $43 million last season, a figure the dubs will probably slash by at least half, assuming he's back in the Bay Area at all. There, is a, there will be a point somewhere on the salary scale at which extra dollar for Thompson represents a decrease in his value to the franchise. Not to mention, the Warriors will likely have to bid against several teams for Thompson and could also find themselves priced out. When I saw this, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. I, I want Clay to remain a Warrior, but I'm not going to be paying him $30 million a year. I, I don't think Golden State wants to get in a bidding war for $30 million a year for Clay Thompson. Because at the end of the day, he is approaching retirement. He's not in his prime anymore. We know that Clay is not the player that he was when he won the first three and then even the fourth championship for Golden State. He, he, I would pay him $20 million a year if I'm Joe Lacob and the, and the Warriors, but I'm not going to budge all the way to 30 and, and kind of bury the franchise for the foreseeable future. If you look at what Clay did over the last 22 games of the uh, NBA season, um, this is taking March and April into effect. He was solid, uh, offensively at least. 19.5 points per game, 2.5 boards per game, 2.5 assists as well. 46% from the field and upwards of over 41% from three. Yes, Klay Thompson was still a sharpshooter out there, but he didn't defend. Now, I'm not sitting here and saying that the, uh, any of the Warriors defended, but Klay Thompson's defensive rating was upwards of 115 to 117. That's just not good at the end of the day. And if you're looking for a guy who can co-star next to Seth Curry for the last couple of years of his prime, I don't think that they want it to be Klay Thompson making $30 million a year. That's going to bury the franchise. You want to expand roles for guys like Jonathan Kaminga, Brandon Pajemski, and more. And we know that there's teams with interest in Klay Thompson. There's teams with interest in paying Klay Thompson. The Orlando Magic, we've talked about in this video. But also, the Detroit Pistons have the world at their fingertips in terms of cap space, as well as the Philadelphia 76ers, who, in Klay's mind, might see that as, oh, I can go get a payday and contend for an NBA championship next season and beyond. Now, as far as what Vegas believes... 
that Clay Thompson will do. They actually think that he'll be a Golden State Warrior next year. He's actually favored to return back to the Bay Area, but then you see the Magic there creeping up at plus 300. And then the rest of the teams are long shots. Philadelphia is 16-1 to because they'll be looking for bigger fish like a Paul George in free agency. And I imagine that Paul George would probably favor Philadelphia over Orlando if he were to leave Los Angeles. And then speaking of Los Angeles, you have the Lakers there as well and the OKC Thunder. They also have a lot of cap space as well, and they need to spread the floor with shooters too. At the end of the day, it's up to Clay, though, right? Like, does what, what does he want to do? Does he want to remain a warrior for life and, and take $20 million a year? Now, listen, I'm not an NBA player. I know it's all about value and, and what you think you deserve. But $20 million a year is a, a ton of money. It's a ton of money. And if Clay Thompson thinks that you know, he, he just wants to waste the last couple of years of his career – somewhere where he's not going to really be contending. I mean, if he goes to Philadelphia, maybe. But, like, if he doesn't want to remain a warrior for life and he just wants to take that fat payday, then he's going to do it. It's up to him at the end of the day. I hope he comes back to Golden State, but I'm not going to be the guy who's out there throwing $30 million at Klay Thompson at this point in his career. What do you think Klay Thompson is going to do in free agency? Is he gone? Is he out of Golden State? Or is he going to wrap up his career and be a warrior for life? Let me know down in the comments section below. I want to see what you guys uh, think Klay Thompson will do in free agency. Not what he should do, but what he will do. Because we all know you want to get your payday out there. But what, what do you think Klay Thompson will do in NBA free agency this year? Now, Brooke Lopez to Golden State, right? You see the lower third there at the bottom of your screen. This is a trade idea that I saw from the fan-sided network for the Golden State Warriors Blue Man Hoop, and they talked about Golden State kind of getting a unicorn trade target here in Brooke Lopez from the Milwaukee Bucks. Let's see what they had to say. As the Bucks look at ways to retool around Giannis Antetokounmpo and Damian Lillard, they need to find a way to add depth with their limited team-building tools. One path to do so is to, is, could be to move on from one of their highly paid starters in order to get back multiple players. If Lopez does hit the open market, the Warriors should pick up the phone. They can offer a package in return that would help the Bucks out with multiple rotation players without overpaying for a player near the end of his career. I, I think a move like this is only made if you really think that you're going to be contending for a championship next season. I mean, with the player that Brooke Lopez is now, he doesn't really fit the timeline uh, of the players like Jonathan Kaminga, Brandon Pajemski, Moses Moody, and the like. But what he does do is he adds an element to your roster that you haven't had in a long time, really since Draymond Green was running at the five and spreading the floor and being an efficient three-point shooter himself. Brooke Lopez is an, is an efficient three-point shooter, and he protects the rim. 12.5 points per game last season along with five boards. He's never going to be that glass cleaner that you're looking for to control possessions and, and what have you. So I, I can't imagine that he would be the Warriors' leading rebounder or the guy that they counted on to get boards down there because he does operate a ton on the perimeter in Milwaukee, shooting 37% from the three-point line. He's an efficient player for, for the volume of threes that he takes. He's a very efficient player. Last season, back in 2022-23, it's probably the best season of this new renaissance of his career. Because you know back in New Jersey or in Brooklyn, he didn't really have a three ball. That wasn't his game at all. He was kind of a back-to-the-basket player. But now as he's been these years in Milwaukee, he's been an elite three-point shooter and has really spread the floor and added a new element to their game that they were missing with Giannis Antetokounmpo not really being a floor spacer. But Lopez is a free agent after the 24-25 season. And that concerns me because, like, if you're going to have to give up pretty good capital to go get a player like Lopez, you're, there's no guarantee that he's going to resign, and there's no guarantee that he is going to elevate you to championship contender status. Is he going to be this cornerstone piece making $24 million a year f next season and beyond? I mean, yes, he's, he's 36 years old, but at the end of the day, what, what are you going to resign him for after 2024 25? Because if you look at Fan Sided's trade idea, got to give up a little bit. You got to give you got to give a lot to get a lot. Not in this scenario though. Moses Moody heading to Milwaukee as well as Kevon Looney and Gary Payton the second. But Moses Moody's the real kicker here. L Brooke Lopez, yes, you're getting him back. I'm seeing this as a kind of a one for one trade of sorts because you're probably not going to bring back Kevon Looney and you're probably not going to bring back Gary Payton the second. You're really going one for one here with Moody and Lopez and in my opinion Brooke Lopez doesn't bring you over the top without another major move made, i.e. trading for a guy that you have to probably give up Jonathan Kaminga for, like a Donovan Mitchell or something like that. I, I don't think this is a move you make in a vacuum and then just head into next season playing that way. 
and giving up Moody for an expiring veteran, I, I think it feels odd. I think, I think a lot of Warriors fans believe that Moody can turn into a pretty solid player, uh, a guy that you want in your rotation who can play on both ends of the floor, defend and spread. And if you're looking for a guy like Brooke Lopez and you, and you want to continue this franchise's trajectory as a young core, I don't think you give up Moody for a 36-year-old Brooke Lopez. But would you give up Moses Moody to land Brooke Lopez? Be Dunleavy for me and comment why or why not. Let me know in the, uh, down below if you would do this trade if it meant another move was coming. I mean, yes, giving up Brooke, uh, Moses Moody for Brooke Lopez in a one-for-one -one deal and no other moves being made in the offseason probably isn't your best course of action. But at the end of the day, Brooke Lopez is a good player. You got to give up good to get good in this league. So in my opinion, I don't know if I would do this trade, but Brooke Lopez is somebody I would like to see in Golden State. Subscribe to Warriors today. That'll do it for today's show. I'm Smitty. This is my first time on Warriors today, carrying the load by myself. Maybe I stuttered a couple times, maybe I didn't, but I want to be bringing you guys Warriors content like nobody else is on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Warriors TV. We'll be covering all of Golden State's free agency rumors, trade rumors, draft rumors. You want it, you got it here at Warriors today.